I'm Yvonne Jeans and, I, and myself and Sue Reeves just here are uh, lecturers in nutrition at University of Roehampton. My background, I trained as a dietitian and my interest in PCOS came about whilst working as a dietitian and not having this, the information tools for myself to um, give appropriate dietary advice. But that's one side of the story that activated my interest in PCOS. And talking to women with PCOS, the charity Verity um, for PCOS, a reoccurring theme is GPs, that, fourth, that first interface with the health professionals. And quite often they're diagnosed in adolescence, um, disturbed menstrual function, and as they go through, they have a life course with the disorder, the syndrome, um, come back in their mid-twenties about infertility issues, then later on in life, often obesity, type 2 diabetes, cardiovascular disease risk as well. Oops, sorry. Um, and it's an extremely common condition. The, um, the charity Verity only set up in 1997, and PCOS UK, which is the medical arm of charity, only set up in 2005. And their main aim was to increase the awareness of PCOS to healthcare professionals and the um, treatments and support available. So there's many symptoms associated with PCOS that can lead to reduction in health-related quality of life, and consequently depression and anxiety are commonly reported. Um, there's an ovarian dysfunction is central to the condition, along with insulin resistance, which is intrinsic to PCOS. And as I've mentioned, obesity, but so there's insulin resistance related to obesity, but also to PCOS. And there's also many presenting with excess hair and male pattern baldness and hyperandrogenism. And I've mentioned about the increased risk for type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. It's a multi-symptom um, condition and people it's a very heterogeneous, heterogeneous in nature so some people will present with more severe symptoms than others and it will change over a period of time. And I just should highlight that although the sim syndrome is called polycystic ovaries the, they are not actually cysts they're immature follicles so we have a, a difficulty about the name of the syndrome doesn't describe it sufficiently. Oh, I do apologise. Um, I meant to mention Helen Mason, who's Professor of Endocrinology, um, Reproductive Endocrinology here at St George's Hospital University. Um, she's also a director on PCOS UK, and she's been integral with the support and development of the project. So the diagnostic criteria for PCOS, the one that's most currently used in clinical situations is the Rotterdam criteria, where two of the three are required. So oligo or anovulation, clinical or biochemical signs of a hyperandrogenism or polycystic ovaries. And I've put up the 1990 criteria because that's seen as a more strict criteria. You get more um, people presenting with a more severe phenotype. Um, and definitely in the research setting, people are moving back to this criteria um, and thinking there's many subtypes of PCOS. But that's the sort of background for PCOS that, for those who are less familiar with it. And there are some guidelines, but um, not, not so many, really. But the guidelines from the Royal College of Obstet Obstetricians and Gynaecologists recommend women should be advised regarding weight management. Importantly, I see it, those who are lean, those adolescents that present at an early age, to be advised to remain lean. It's understood to be quite challenging to remain lean um, rather than being dismissed and to come back when they would like to conceive. Um, and over those period of years, very anecdotally speaking, um, it's been reported that they gain weight and then that increased weight causes issues with um, infertility and uh, worsening of symptoms. And many studies have shown that just a 5 to 10 percent reduction in weight has significant improvements in reproduction function, fasting insulin, improving androgen levels and reducing risk factors for diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So it's not surprising that the guidelines recommend um, weight management as a key focus. Also, because of the increased risk of type 2 diabetes, an oral glucose tolerance test is recommended, particularly for those who are obese, family history of type 2 diabetes, over 40, or at increased risk of type 2 diabetes. And interesting, the nice, clin nice clinical knowledge summaries that were just published in February this year recommend that all women with PCOS should be offered an oral glucose tolerance test. And I appreciate the um, implications of that in a GP setting, etc especially if the person's presenting who's lean. 
But what we're looking at is potentially time, timely lifestyle and weight management could financially benefit given the cost implications of treating infertility, diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So what we've got at the moment from speaking or looking at the forums with Verity and speaking to women with PCOS, talking to experts in PCOS, is a really strong feature of GPs, GPs awareness of the condition and what I, we're interested in is facilitating GPs, helping them to uh, manage their patients better. But at the moment we don't have any evidence to know what's actually going on. You can talk to some very vocal people from the charity of Verity and you'd think it's a dire situation out there. But talk to many other GPs and other healthcare professionals and there's a more positive approach in some aspects. So our aim, um, thanks to the funding of the network, is to map the treatment and referral routes for women with PCOS. Um, because at the moment, and rightly so, it's, uh, you treat the symptoms as it's a heterogeneous condition. So following initial consultations, patients may be referred to dieticians, endocrinologists, gynaecologists, dermatologists, and identify what support's available for women with PCOS. Do they receive the weight management advice? What does it consist of? And do they get a timely oral glucose tolerance test to detect the underlying diabetes they may present with? So we, the project's looking for all the um, boroughs in South West London, um, looking to recruit GPs. Um, we've got a, a research assistant looking to um, get hold of GP contact details and also through the commissioning support unit communications um, to help us get to the GPs. We're very aware that the questionnaire we're sending out needs to be short, concise, but to give us the information we need and we're spending a lot of time developing that questionnaire, talking to directors of PCOS UK, um, a GP who's got, from St George's who's got a uh, specialist interest in women's health as well. And I think we've got it down to approximately 20 minutes at the moment with the incentives for the GPs that they will get access or we will highlight where they can get more information on the syndrome and um, uh, incentive of £100 to complete it as well. It's an online survey, I should add. Um, and we also plan to speak to service planners, including commissioners, regarding funding pathways for women, pathways for women with PCS, seeing if there's similarities, differences um, between the commissioning groups. So at, at the moment, I should say, we're at the developmental stage, collecting the, the GP addresses, um, contact details, and making sure that this questionnaire is the best we can make it. So to summarise, the key purpose is to investigate and map current treatment and referral routes for women with PCOS living in South West London, identify if there's any differences in care for women with PCOS um, that is um, provided between the clinical commissioning groups, investigate if women with PCOS are getting appropriate advice for long-term health. And in this process, we'll look to in, um, increase GP's awareness of current recommendations and develop recommendations for the future. Also, a key question within the um, survey is asking the GPs what they want. What would they benefit? Do they want yet another guideline? Or would they just like something to be signposted out as where they can find something? So I'd just like to acknowledge Susan Berry, our research assistant, who's um, employed for just one day a week, um, and the South West Health Social Care System for funding the project. Thank you.